Hello and welcome, I'm That Resolves, and today we're going to be furthering on our campaign with Kaza. And this time we're going to be playing two of the last decks just to fill in, so we've got like some gameplay with each of the four factions. And today we're going to be covering the Wild Aristocrats deck, which is based around having three cards or more in hand at most times to get some effects. So that might be giving you units buffs or giving your opponents debuffs and things like that. But we'll get into that when we look at the deck tech. And then the other one is the wild to discard deck which is basically just looking to mill our opponent out or just like vanish their deck so that they're able to just die to the fatigue damage and that's generally what this is about so i think first off we're actually going to play with this discard deck because it seems kind of interesting so let's get on to the games okay so here we are let's say well, not a mirror match but i think we're in the same faction at least yeah, this seems good. So, the idea of this deck is to just keep doing this. Initiative, minus one card to the opponent's deck is mostly what we care about. We do also do a little bit of our own deck as well, but we do have politics as the end game, so we're able to shuffle some of those cards back in anyway. So, hopefully, we just want to be decking our opponent and just uh, getting the job done. So, probably would like another one drop. So, let's... Actually, I do kind of like this, though. I guess we can see what happens here. Yeah, I do like this. Okay, so this is better. Yeah, we've got two one drops that are going to kind of care. So there's politics. So plus two cards to your deck and minus two cards to the opponent's deck. So that could be like our finisher. Uh, but for now, it's kind of expensive. So let's put that in the cars pile. And then I'm just going to make our two plays. And the bias cry start of each turn this is just going to discard one card from our opponent's deck and then in terms of abilities uh we've got our two street performances uh those are good later on uh but i do want to draw more cards actually so maybe actually you do draw a card for playing them so maybe it's okay but this should be good at being able to protect our little one drops that have effects like that and trick doesn't really do too much on turn one i guess unless you're on like the draw and you've got an aggressive unit so i guess we will plan we still get to draw one card because if you do have uh four cards in hand at the start of your turn you wouldn't just draw zero you draw one which is still kind of fine i've got well we're still going to get those two cards back because we're going to be able to street performance although we do end up trading for um I guess plays on the turn we use them, but if we want to keep... Oh, we're just playing like a, a straight up mirror and our parliament is gone. Well, we've got a second one, but yeah, I do like that card. So the parliament is sort of playing it in with our scheme. Well, our plan. Let's have a look. So this is each time you play a schemer, grant minus one attack to the opponent's characters for a round. So most of our units should be schemers, so that should be able to sort that out. So let us take a look what we've got. So we're going to envoy... I do like this, but it'd probably be a little bit later. So let's pop this in here. Then I guess we can... Flow of Knives because it's basically free. Then we get to kill one of our opponent's units. Gonna hit our opponent for one, and then we'll just stun this for the turn. Uh, do I make the attack? Yeah, okay. So the Street Farms here just stuns this, and we get to draw a card. Nothing too exciting. I might hang fire with this uh, and just use it at a more key time. But that's it for me. Just ready. And then next thing we get to use our ability again. And I think because at the end game it's the sabotage that matters. I think rather than the, the street robber. So I think we're more incentivized to be able to go for this emblem influence. Although actually the Masked Thieves are really good because each time that unit attacks the opponent gets milled for one and one doesn't sound like much but uh, the opponent you know only has like a 30 card deck we're drawing a lot of cards per turn so next turn our opponent's going to draw three so down to 17 so if we're able to just get a couple of cards out we should be able to finish our opponent off with mill really quickly so I do want to get the Intimidation in play now so let's just put the Counterfeiter away Get the intimidation down and pacify. It is going to stun our opponent's board again, which I do kind of like, as it gives us. Uh, I guess we get to do this, one, don't we? 
as it gives us the opportunity to just keep this uh, biased cryer in play. Uh, the more turns this stays in play, the more cards are going to be discarded from our opponent's deck. Oh, so our opponent's... Okay, the dead ended that one. That's fine. So I, I guess, like, um, that's the downside of AI, because I reckon, like, a, a real player would have killed this. But for now, we could make two Masked Thieves, which seems kind of good. Yeah, once we've got the time to do another Intimidation. So let's just make two Masked Thieves here. So these are hidden, so they pretty much for sure get to do an attack. And that'll be just extra cards gone from our opponent's deck. And we're on four now, so we already get to do the thing. So I guess we're just going to go for the Sabotage here. Let's get rid of three cards. Wow, they get big really quickly with that Sabotage, so yeah. And I should realise that that was only a four as well, so this must be a really sort of quick... Uh, this leader must really just want to get the milling going up really quickly. Then, I guess could also have gone for street robbers, but they're just furtive. I don't think that's quite as good as the just like milling them for free. So I would I'm tempted to kind of keep these in play for a little while. As whilst they're hidden, they can't be sort of like impacted by anything the opponent could do. And to be able to use them to kill something a little bit bigger. Yeah, because these one twos are kind of a nuisance, really. If we could, like, dead end one of them so that we could just kill the two four, I think that'd be much better. But what? Well, information theft is kind of free. I guess we'll get rid of the meddlesome gossip. I do actually need more power. I don't think we do really for quite some time. Anything here that we want to play? Um, not really, actually. Let's just keep up like the the turbo mill here. I played that out of order. I should have played the metal some gossip first. But at least this is a two-two now, so it kind of you know it deals damage. It should have been bigger to the point where it could have traded with this, but this is uh, kind of where we are for now. So let's just ready up here. We can still dedicate, but we're unlikely to at this point. And heal for free at this point when you've got 20 health, like that's the maximum your health can go to, so that uh, doesn't really do too much. Then I guess I've got uh, five cards now. So we can get them down to three cards just with these attacks, even if it is just like jump attacks. Well, it's not really jump attacks because it kills the two one twos, but it's not the most exciting. So actually, each time we play a schema, grunt minus one attack. So that seems kind of good. And then schema should shrink of opponent's units, which means that we can kind of happily just kill off the the guards there. So minus our point down. So they are going to draw two here, go down to two. I think we've pretty much got this in the bag then. The opponent shouldn't be able to put cards in play. It's kind of quick enough to be able to mill us or kill us. And if they don't kill both of these, then these are just like huge threats. So just if it goes to your face and I've not got a guard, that's uh, some big damage, let me tell you. Yep. Now, if only two cards left, um... I guess we need to do some damage to them. I guess play a Festival Thief, so another interesting card here. And then I suppose, you know, just uh, put up to 18. And then they should pretty much die just over the next two turns. We're looking at our Dedicate Pile here. We've not really got too much we really want to play. We do have a Politics now, but it doesn't do too much. And then we draw two, but then we've got like a bunch of cards still left, and our opponent's got not very many options because they've got like, well, they can't draw cards for the rest of the game. And the next time they would draw a card, they just die instead, which, yeah, it's interesting that Mill is perhaps playable. Like when it, when it comes to be playing like a, a ranked or 
whatever competitive environment that you would be playing. Also, Lights card just replaces itself. You know, you it draws a card and you just get refresh the play, so it helps you just get on board. But yeah, just information thief for no reason, and then just uh, pass the turn. You did it to yourself. There you go. All done. But yeah, it's interesting because a lot of players do like these alternate kind of win conditions or weird or wacky decks that are trying to win in like a, a different direction than just putting a beefy unit on the board. So I do like that this is possible, although we'd probably have to be kind of careful with fatigue because I do remember people were not the happiest about that in Hearthstone when there was like fatigue decks running around. Okay, so I think we do want like a bunch of one drops in our hand. I do like the messenger because it just helps us sack for our deck. Uh, Festival Thief is good, Souls Conspiracy, but I think we want the early interaction and just like the cantrip. I just kind of like because if our opponent is trying to beat us down, we still get to put these things in play. Okay, well this isn't the most ideal of a first hand. Okay, our opponent's playing Wealth. Wealth is an interesting match, I suspect, because they do put a lot of their own cards in the discard pile to sort of have effects later on. But they also have ways of putting those cards back, so it might be a little bit of a back and forth, which is going to be interesting. But I guess we're just playing the the amulet this turn and going to draw some cards from our ability. So we're going to plan here just to add two street performances. Street performances just really going to be able to protect our one drops as well, because we do have the one drop, the bias cry, which when it's in play, start of our turn, discards one card from the opponent's deck. Yeah, see, I promise to do an job for us. And they've milled over their Traveler's Monolith, which I'm happy with because that's got like a six activations to be able to put a card from their Void back in. Oh, the Emblem of Wealth is... It could be a problem. This is the one that gives them the yeah, protection. So it's really hard to break that chain up. Okay, we'll get to put like five more cards back in, but... Should be too much of a problem here. So let's just play our messengers. I need the two first. Hmm. I do like this, so I'm probably going to get rid of uh, one of the street farmses. It's all cost one, so we can get back at some point. We don't actually need that much influence in this deck. It looks like. Okay, and then messenger it up. I think it's worth flurrying the knives here, just break this up a little bit. Try and stop our opponent from being able to do the Emblem of Wealth. Then, do we just dead end this because it's a pain? Yeah, I think I will do. Let's try and make it so our opponent has to do like, just jump through multiple hoops to be able to activate this because once this is activated, this is a real pain just to be able to break up. Especially for a deck like ours, I don't think it's got too much of a, a board thing going on. But the Cydalian Parliament? This is going to be real helpful. And I guess we can... Hmm. Any turn, minus... I do like the, this Envoy probably more than the Counterfeit. Yeah, let's go with this. We unlock our level 3 ability, which is probably going to be to add two Masked Thieves to our hand. Uh, these are Rogues, not Schemes or anything like that. We could pop our fingers to put two of these in play. I think that's what we're going to do, actually. Yeah, we'll activate this. We also get to get the Parliament going as well, because we've got three plays this turn now. Um, I will Sabotage, but only because I'm not sure if I lose this next turn, because I've gone up to four, so I'm just going to put Three opponents cards in their void. And then we'll call that a day. So opponent just gets to deal four damage to a character, but I'm kind of fine with that because I want our board a little bit more empty anyway, so we can just start playing the, the schemers down. Yeah, the brute is this is a real beat in this card. Remember when we played this deck, like when we were just playing the theme decks, 
this just absolutely smashed the mill deck just because it won so quickly. Then what can we do? So we can't sweep farm, farm six, it's got great into attack, so could very well be that we just try and race here, I guess. So what we've got in here. We don't really like unconditional removal here. Which is uh, a little bit of a problem it could be. Although we could attack this down to free and then dead end it, so I might dead end it next turn. Although, if we play some schemers, we can potentially get it down. Oh. So let's attack our opponent for one. Put this in the cars pile. Then we should play the envoy, which shrinks our opponent down. And then we can play the bureaucrat, which minus one is both of our decks. So it is like a bit more of a symmetrical effect, but it's another schema that's able to shrink this down, and then we should be able to pacify it. Oh yes, that's just a good deck building. So we can attack both our threats. I think that's what we'll do, because our opponent is hopefully going to be unable to deal with both of them. And this will get him down to eight. And then at the end of our turn, the Cadillac Envoy is going to trigger, put minus one card in their deck. So it's going to take a lot for our opponent to be able to get through this. I do think there are board wipes in this faction, the wealth faction. Yeah, so risky move. Yeah, puts down to one card left. So if we're able to pop that at the end of our turn, which we should do, I'll probably be taking full damage, so it'll take 15 and then die. So yeah, nothing for us to do whatsoever, but I'm gonna get in there with conspiracy. Actually, uh do you like this card? Let's just uh, pass the turn, I guess. So, pop, and our opponent takes uh, 15 from drawing three cards, and each one's a fatigue. Maybe fatigue could be reworked where it's cumulative, like in Hearthstone, but yeah. I wonder how competitive this deck would be against like an, an actual person who'd be able to pick apart all the pieces that actually matter. I'll just be super aggressive and just kill you. Okay, so now it's time to play the Aristocrats deck. And this one's all about having three or more cards in hand in the mid to late game. So as long as you survive the other game, uh, your board is just going to become really overwhelming for the opponent. And they're going to need, like, exactly unconditional removal just to get rid of your stuff. So let's give it a go. So let's take a look. Probably want some early game going on. Yeah, I like this. Yeah, I mean, it's a 2 one for one already, which seems fine in this game. Uh, but also, it's got if you have three or more cards in hand, you invoke a supplies, which is good. So I'm probably going to lean on any hero abilities that rely on you having... Well, they'll let you draw extra cards like we saw from the, the mill deck then. But yeah, I do like this. And the resources just helps you to stay alive for a little bit longer. So on one, we get to sabotage our opponent. Oh, we're going to invoke an emblem of wealth. So this relies on mercenaries, aristocrats, and traders. So aristocrats, mercenaries, and I'm going to assume we've got some traders in here. So I guess that's the one we go for, which is the, the summon there. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so I'm probably going to summon that in this turn. So let us. We'll pop this, the Cartier in here. We'll get that back later. Uh, but for now, just going to play Private Guard. It's going to minus two us. Then I guess we will summon the Emblem of Wealth here. And then I guess we'll just uh, Feast Host. So straight away we've got the, the supplies. We don't have too many things that we can actually heal here, because it's all kind of like low toughness. But this will help keep us alive. We're against a glory deck, and this does look like a more aggressive style of uh, glory deck than the one that we played the other day, which is more like a glory control. So maybe just gain free every other turn is going to be good for us. Probably seems to have like a similar strategy, but yeah. 
we're just going to be trading boards. Looks like we might not be able to get the Anvil of Wealth for some time. But we do have Highway Assaults. So. Yeah, I think we'll just get rid of this. I think we want our opponent to play some more things to the board. And then play the Ambulant. And then I guess we're just going to be passing the turn to draw two. So our ability next turn is going to be minus two. So this trade. So this is a card that already exists. So minus two cards to each deck. Then everyone draws two cards. Or dissuade, which is pacify all opponent's characters for a round. That could be pretty useful, actually. Mm -hmm. But I think we're probably going to be on the draw two plan. And I'm just going in with like a highway assault into highway assault. I'm just hoping that that's good. Which, given what we see right now, seems good. We're going to get like a bunch of cards off our opponent. Just really ease up the board. We do take five, but we've got a supplies in place. We're able to make that not really as much of a problem. So, minus a card to your deck, but it's a vigilant unit. And then we've got the austere noble, which can't play yet, so I think we'll pop that. Then I guess we'll just be on the trade plan. Because our opponent was going to draw the cards anyway, it doesn't seem like it's too much of a downside. It's like we get the cards and they kind of don't. So I guess we Harry Assault here deals two damage to all the opponent's units. We do need to kind of win pretty quickly. I guess that's what the sub theme of supplies is about, is that we can get pretty dangerously low on our lives. So and we've not seen many of the free cards or more sort of strategies here. So I think I will play the Feast Host and then just heal ourselves for free. End of our turn, we get to play another Supplies, which seems good. Unless our opponent's got like a aggressive unit, we could get like another activation of this. Which is good. Opponent's got like a 1 4 not aggressive. Yeah. Uh oh, the Iron Sword giving our opponent a 4 4 is a little bit of a problem, I'll be honest. So, protection, legacy, invoke resources. So, we can kill this. I think that's what we'll do just because it seems like a bit of a threat. So, I would like to invoke supplies this turn, but I think we just want to play some things. So, I guess heal ourselves up. Play the aristocrat. That seems good. We do want to get to six as well. Pirate Assault. Add a Summon of Pirate. I do like this Pirate Assault. Might just clear up our front's board. So do we want to... Yeah, get rid of this guard. Start building up towards a 6. Uh, the 6 does have like a board wipe in it, so that should be good for us. Uh oh. Well, our front's got a 6-3 <laughs> aggressive unit. Yikes. Do they still have use of the sword? No, they don't. It's just this, so... If we let our opponent get three units in play, they're probably going to get this bonus, which is giving them plus one, plus one. Yeah, and Vigilant, which is pretty huge. So now we should hopefully be able to start going off, which is the start of your turn. If you have three or more cards in hand, grant plus one, plus one to your Aristocrats. So we are going to play that. I'm going to slow down on doing this a little bit. So do we want to kill this? I'm not sure when this happens. Like, Does it happen before we draw our hand? It seems like it wouldn't make sense, otherwise it'd just be always plus one, plus one. So do we have an aristocrat? That's a trader. We might trade, save this for when we've got uh, a mercenary, so we can just have like the full free for this. Because that would be kind of a nice surprise for our opponent. So we could go down on cars, and I think we're going to, just to play the, the aristocrat. So then we'll have... At the beginning of our turn, we'll get a 3-4 and a 3-4 that have both got this Divine Shield on them. I thought like that should be pretty good for us. And then if we draw a Merchant, we should be able to keep this going for the rest of the game. So, Abnoble, Aristocrat, Trader. So, still an Aristocrat. So, I guess we're just going to get rid of the Food Vendor. This won't be super exciting because it'll only be a free free. But I might actually take a turn off doing like everything in the world just to get a 
good swing in here. If we... Is it worth killing this though? I'm not sure if it is, because we could just pop past it and just use this for something bigger. I think we just start need we need to start turning the corner and just getting our opponent dead. Then we'll just hit my attack. I think the the six three is kind of more vulnerable, so we'll leave that in play. We are getting pretty close to being milled out ourselves. And this is a turn that we are going to take off. But maybe for the rest of the game we should be okay. Just to not draw too many cards. Oh, so everyone's got like an AoE here to be able to remove our areas of effect there. So invoke resources and draw two cards. A little bit risky. But these the Cartier seems good. Right, what's a pack donkey do? It's a beast, it's not quite what we're looking for. I guess this one's kind of weaker, so we'll just get rid of that, and then we'll just start attacking our opponent. So I might actually play a Cartier from here as well. That seems kind of good. I've got resources as well. Hmm. We could actually activate this pack donkey. I'm feeling kind of comfortable now to the point where we could maybe, like, inheritance. Yeah. Let's just draw two and we get to put the two back anyway. Oh, yes, the patriarch. That's what we're looking for. So this says, any turn, if you have three or more cards in hand, you get plus one, plus one, and vigilant to all the other characters, which is going to be huge. So we're going to get to cause this out and then cause it back in later. I believe that's how it works. That's kind of exciting. So I am looking forward to playing the Patriarch next turn. And if I promise unable to kill us this turn, looks... Okay. So we're not actually dead. Cool. So we'll get another palace here. Doesn't do too much yet. We're going to crack our opponent for six. And I think we're actually just going to kill our opponent before we get to sort of uh, see the, the great technology of the, the Patriarch here. But let's trade anyway. Let's get rid of the feast host, and then next time we'll be able to do our six drops. And then this landowner as well is when we've got three cards or more in hand, this aristocrat strategy. Uh, we get to get plus three to our resistance every turn. So combining these two together makes it very difficult for our opponents to be able to kill us, I believe. Although we're probably just going to kill our opponent next turn. <laughs> Because they've oh, got a vigilant unit, so we just get to whack him in the face. There we go. Well, let's move on to the last game, I guess. Okay, so Inheritance actually is a good card, so I'm going to keep that. Seems kind of really good Valve strategy. Uh, is, resources is the one that puts two cards back, so I did get a little bit confused of that earlier. I do like this, but I could probably do some more cheaper plays to make. So let's just get rid of these. And that's better. A nice private guard is, it does seem like a good opening. We're getting pretty owned by our opponent's uh, street vendor here. Got something in play. I don't know. I'll say we're against Wealth again, because I think this is the, the other Wealth leader. 
so let's pop a pirate assault in so deals free damage to the opponent units so we'll save that for later as just like a, a finisher I guess we'll just pop off the, the private guard and the amulet oh yes got our ability can't forget this so evoking emblem of wealth we might get it off this game because we've got mercenary aristocrat all we need is a trader and off we go I'm pretty sure I've seen traders in this deck. I should probably be looking at like the unit types more, especially when there's at least one leader from each faction that does have the ability to make these emblems, and they do have kind of powerful effects. But if I point trades both of these in, I'm kind of okay with that. Okay, I'll say the opponent disagrees. So let's put a card here away, because we'll get it back later. And then this way we can inheritance and then we can play the the guard if we want. Oh, I'll just tie away assault, that seems good. Then our level three abilities, dissuade or trade. Uh I like trade. Trade seems good. So we've got rid of our page out, but we don't have another one in the deck, so it's not like the end of the world. Uh, but we are just gonna Highway Assault here. Let's get rid of all this nonsense. I want to shuffle it all back in, just start over again. Then I guess we could visual it up. Oh, we've also got the invoking resources, which seems good. I think the protection mechanics probably <sighs> could be a little bit too pushed at some point if you are able to just like buff these units. But it's more egregious with like the Emblem of Wealth. I played against a deck that was able to get this off. And that was... That was something else. Let me tell you. Um, so let's put the Landowner away. We can get that back later. I think that we just... Pop this off because it's kind of free. It's a opponent. So it looks like the opponent's ability to be able to fortify. Giving plus 5 to resistance. Doesn't count towards the maximum. So that's pretty interesting to know. Then I guess we can just play a single feast host here. Uh, so we still get the supplies. And then we've got nothing to heal, but maybe we want to heal ourselves. We do need to kill this pretty quick sharp because it's got well it's got some good text on it. I do wonder how like AoE effects work in it though, so like pirate assault. Would it be able to hit both of these? So, probably a bit of a resource off here. Yeah, that's what I'd like to see. I'll probably just like, letting us have this. Okay, so... We can't really do too much about this uh, guard, to be honest. We can kill it, which... I guess we are going to have to do. Because otherwise that would just be an absolute nuisance to keep playing against that. Guess we'll put Feast of Toast in. We'll play our own guard. We're going to start beating our opponent down a little bit. Then, in here, we do have like the, the Cartier to be able to start putting things back in if we need to. Um, over a turn cycle, I believe you can cause something that's already been caused. So, if we put like the, the Cartier out and it survives a turn, we should be able to put it back in. So, that's somewhat of a nuisance because it means our opponent's going to be able to kill our Vigilant unit and we're probably a little bit dead to this uh, Brute of Bacchagel. Hmm. So, Armed Nobles, these are going to be not extremely big and this one's only going to be a free free. But if our front goes for our unit here, well, let's just win a shortage here. We could heal here. Yeah, I think we will. We'll heal there. 
Or something like that. Maybe more incentivized to just try and kill this. Oh, now this uh, this unit is a nuisance. Oh, multiples of these is kind of bad for us, really. But maybe we can pair up like a, a pirate assault with something else to be able to wipe our opponent's board a little bit. Oh, we could try and mill our opponent out. Hmm. So what do we get at six? We can summon a pirate. We can add a pirate assault to our hand. I think we want the pirate assault. So let's get rid of food vendor. Let's trade it up. That one takes five damage next turn. So if we're able to survive now by... This actually cost a 10, wouldn't it? So that's kind of bad for us. So in our cars pile, if we play the Cartier... So you kind of want to draw as few cards as possible so that we don't die, but so that our opponent dies on like the next turn. Is there something we can... Do we have another one of those cards that can force our opponent to draw to? Do not. But we can... We could potentially Cartier. Because this wouldn't help us, so that's kind of bad for us. And the 6 here gives us a Pirate Assault. So I think we'll take the Pirate Assault. So it can't do any damage to us because we've already taken the cards out. Then we can pop both our opponent's units. Then we do take 5 damage next turn because we have to draw a card. Because we, we haven't got any plays left, so we can't do that. But this seems good. I think this is our path to victory, where we, we kill our opponent the good old-fashioned way. I feel like I probably missed that we could have just like attacked our opponent's face and then them take five, but... Yeah, it's... taking me some time to get used to playing a direct attacking game again. Where your opponent is something that you can attack, and not just like versus, where it's just their units. So, yep. Just a pass from me, and the opponent dies there. Seems good. So this game, I think I need to take some more time playing it just to sort of get used to this. Because I've been playing many traditional card games for a long time now. Uh, just when something comes a little bit left field like this is, yeah, it takes a, some time to get used to. Okay, so that's it from me. Just a, another quick video there. But tomorrow I'll be back with some Eternal. I think we'll be playing some of the Elysian. Or maybe another Stone Sky deck, who knows. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching. I've been that was Orbs, and I'll see you around. But don't forget, if you're interested in the key, let me know. And also, I should have links to the Discord for the game. Um, and that'll be in the description. So, see you around.